This watch is owned by a guy called Andy, and as you can understand, he didn't want to post it to me, so he went to Windsor to collect it. Um, there you are, Richard. There we go, let's have a look at this. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. I can't tell you how much I love the fact that the sweep hand is wedged against the bottom stone there. It is brilliant. On the guarantee and at your service, which is stamped, dated 3rd of March, 1972. Another guarantee, which strangely has the 11th of September, 1972. I'm about to open up this gold Rolex president for the first time since its little accident several years ago. It has had water damage and honestly I have not seen myself what is inside. I have loosened the back with uh, my tool here but I have not opened it myself. So let's get it in focus now and turn the watch over and reveal just how much work we're gonna to have to do on this Rolex. Uh, uh oh, actually we do have some water damage. The crystal was removed manually by me um, because it wasn't waterproof and I took it swimming. So right. that had to come out to get some air to it to try and dry it out. Okay, so all of this is completely fused together. We've got three wheels here that should be separate. Let me just point them out to you with an oiler uh, in the middle. We've got the cannon pinion here, uh, and that has actually come free. That was the thing that came away. Uh, onto that and fused to it, because of the rust, is the hour wheel. This is the one 
uh, around the outside of the cannon pinion and then for the uh, day and date mechanism we've got this component here which is called the star wheel um, and all these should come off separately And now we can take out the balance and this is the most delicate assembly that we've got in the whole watch so we have to be really really careful here. Okay time to remove the bezel from the case and get rid of the vestige of the old glass that was left in there so that we can clean all that up. And before we can move on, we've got to disarm the mainspring. Now, normally we'd do this by moving the click to one side and releasing the power of the mainspring under control by holding the crown, but this is not working. It's all rusted up, but it's dangerous because there's power in there. So we're gonna have to proceed with care now. Okay, well there's the reason we couldn't disarm the mainspring properly. We just need to be careful now as we lift this bridge up. Okay. 
and there it goes now you can't let it get out of control because if the train starts to spin too fast it can do some damage so i'm just putting my finger gently on the barrel here to dampen down the excitement in the train a little bit These components have been in the de-rusting solution now for over five hours, so it's time to try and take apart the central wheels there that were really badly rusted together. Ugh, no idea what this is. It looks like salt or something. Anyway, it's very, very gunky, so we're going to have to get rid of it. Here's something to watch out for. There's this tiny, tiny little jewel right underneath the yoke of the advancing wheel. So yeah, need to watch out for that one. Okay, so these screws here that are retaining this ring around that holds the calendar wheel have totally rusted in and the heads are so badly rusted that we can't get any 
torque onto them. So I'm going to have to bypass them now and just uh, take the rest of the keyless works out and do the powertrain and then we're going to have to bring in some special tools to remove these uh, downstream. It's not the normal way you would do it but then normally the watch isn't completely full of rust. Okay, now we've removed all of the delicate components, we can get a little bit more agricultural with the two rusted screws. So yeah, buckle up because we're gonna bring in a screw extractor and uh, if that doesn't work, then we're gonna have to be a little bit brutal. Okay, we need to keep moving forward, so let's do this safe in the knowledge that it's going to fire up the activity in the comment section a little bit. Now it doesn't actually get much better than that. That is a hole straight through the middle of that screw. So that screw is just gonna knock out really nicely now. The other one, however, isn't quite as clean, but no matter, it's of no engineering significance at all. And we can remove what remains of the screw, no problem. And there's plenty of thread left to use for a new screw. So it's all good. Before I start the manual cleaning on this watch, I just want to show you this, because this is the watch that I make. It's called the Seawolf and it's part of my own brand, Major, which was my rank when I left the British Army. You can check this out on my website, go and check out the whole Seawolf collection. So if you want more details, just follow the link that I've put in the description, because this is a pretty and functional watch by me. And I've just taken apart the automatic works here and as you can see the rust has gone straight down the center here so we're gonna to have to clean all of this up I think though that pretty much all of it is savable maybe not this uh, little 
pinion here, but the rest looks good. Okay, we do definitely have a problem with this uh, pinion. Uh, this is fused on and the retaining clip here has just rusted through completely so it is in it is in two parts so we are going to need to coax this off and replace this pinion i think the axle will be okay but i might replace the axle as well so i've just removed the rotor here and as you can see there is a lot of rust here so it might make sense to replace the axle which is this part here as well maybe even the jewel we'll see how it goes And I think it's fair to say that the cleaning regime does a pretty good job because that is minty, minty fresh. Very, very chuffed with that. Okay, so before we put the new mainspring back in this now nice clean barrel we've got to put a little bit of braking grease just on this the, the barrel sides here so that the mainspring which is designed to slip doesn't slip too much because if it slips too much you're going to lose amplitude and that's not good for accuracy and it is very busy outside the workshop today uh, we've got all sorts of stuff going on out there. I prefer the jackdaws. In fact, the jackdaws should be coming back soon.
So as I apply this reassuringly expensive blue grease to the sliding pinion, I might as well take the opportunity to move it round into the right direction. And there is somebody at the workshop Someone door. Someone is at the front door. Better go and find out what that is.
Now this is good. We have nearly finished the watch and the jack doors are back. I do love the jack doors. There's a whole load of them live in the trees outside of the workshop. And you know, jack doors hang around in pairs. They, uh, they look after each other. So a lot of people ask what the purple substance is on these reversing wheels. Well, the answer is that it is Teflon. And Rolex use it, I guess, because Teflon is one of the substances with the very lowest coefficient of friction.